Today, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about starting out in night photography. not a huge advocate of equipment making the photographer. However, in night photography, some equipment is necessary. So you're going to need a DSLR or mirrorless camera and a fast lens. Now fast lens is defined as a lens that's an F number of 2.8 or smaller. So F1.4, F1.8, etc. You can use a kit lens, which is typically F3.5. Just know that the lower the F number, the more light that lens is allowing to hit your sensor. And so when you're shooting astrophotography or night photography, you're gonna want as much light to hit that sensor as possible. So the lens becomes super important. Now, my setup initially was a Nikon D3300 with a Rokinon 24 millimeter 1.4 lens, which totaled around $1,000 Canadian. So you don't have to spend big money to make this happen. You're gonna need a tripod. Now you're gonna need something to hold the camera steady while you take a picture. Remember, we need as much light to hit that sensor as possible, so that shutter is gonna remain open for a long time in night photography. Too long to where you can't actually hold the camera still that long without getting blurry photos. So a tripod becomes completely necessary. You're also gonna to wanna to invest good money in a tripod, something that's sturdy, that will hold up over the course of the night and not shake when there's wind and other things thrown at it. You don't need it blowing over in the course of the night. And you don't actually want to touch your camera while it's taking exposure. So to activate the shutter, you're going to want to either use the camera's built-in self timer option or attach an external intervalometer. So that is something that you can either tether directly to your camera with a cord or it can be wireless, something that will trip the shutter remotely. So you don't actually have to physically touch the shutter button in your camera which can lead to camera shake and a lot of frustration from the user. So you have basic gear, now we need to know when to go. In the Northern Hemisphere, you need to know that the shiny galactic center, the galactic core, is visible from about April to October. So in April, it's gonna rise in the southeastern sky, in October, it's gonna set in the southwestern sky, and it's gonna span basically that whole southern sky throughout the course of the summer. So that's the direction you're gonna to wanna to point your camera is kind of that direction in the summer. But you need to know in the winter time, we have constellations like Orion, we have the winter side of the Milky Way, and you can also use different approaches um, to just maybe get stars or even just telephoto action of different nebulas, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of options when it comes to night photography. You don't have to get stuck in one specific genre of Milky Way photography. Each can give you a different look and really kind of different feeling. So explore what really speaks to you in night photography. You can't roll out on your deck in the middle of the day and expect to take a good night photo. There's only one star in the sky and it's pretty bright. It's going to overshadow any of those stars and images that you're trying to shoot. So you're going to wait till that star is 18 degrees below the horizon. So when the sun is below that point, we have what's called astronomical darkness. And that is when there is no sun or ambient light from the sun interfering with the sky and washing out any of the details. So you want to look for astronomical darkness. Now there are periods of time past certain latitudes in the summer when you don't actually get astronomical darkness but the skies are fairly dark and dark enough to where you can actually see good nebulosity and good detail in the night sky. You're also gonna to wanna to focus on a new moon cycle. So that's when there is no moon or very little moon in the sky. So a week on either side of a new moon will be a good time to go out for night photography. You don't wanna go out when there's a full moon in the sky because that reflects sunlight back in the atmosphere, but a week on either side of that full moon to where the detail is really washed out and there's no nebulosity left in the night sky. You're not gonna be able to see anything because the moon is just too bright. So go out when there's a new moon or it's very close to a new moon. So where are we gonna go? If you live in a city, you can't just go on your back deck, put your camera down and take a picture of the night sky. You're gonna encounter what's called light pollution. And this is light cast from street lights, house lights, that kind of thing. And it fills the air atmosphere up with light. And so we can't actually see the stars, let alone photograph them if we live in the middle of a city. So if you're in an urban area, you're gonna to wanna to get in a car and drive away from that light pollution into a darker area. So we're gonna pull up a light pollution map, and this is gonna show you where different areas are that are darker around you. So you wanna to head to an area that's green, blue, or clear. And so those are the areas that I successfully photographed the night sky in. You're gonna see enough detail. Obviously, um, blue and clear are better than green, but if you only look at the green, 
you will see the Milky Way, you will see different areas like that. So I do suggest getting away from the city lights in order to see the night sky in all of its vivid beauty. So besides light pollution, I use tools like Google Earth um, for scouting. I use Windy and Clear Outside to track clear skies. I'm looking at Stellarium for different sky options, when things are rising, when things are setting, where nebulas are, where star fields are, that kind of thing. So a lot of planning tools that there are available. I made a whole video on that. Feel free to check it out here um, and know that there's a lot of tools that you can do, use to plan. I'm not going to go through them here. That may make this video way too long. Right. You got the gear. We know where and when we're going. Let's teleport to the location. Seriously, here? Of all places, come on. Okay, whatever, fine, let's do it here. Okay, so first we need to focus the camera. So, so you wanna turn your camera to manual focus, open up your aperture as wide as it goes, and zoom in on a bright star or a bright light. Zoom in and make that light point as small as possible. Once you've made it as small as possible, you are in focus. So now we're in focus. We need to worry about shutter speed here. So shutter speed is going to be either we're going to follow the 500 rule or the MPF rule. The 500 rule states it's 500 divided by your focal length will give you your shutter speed. So first you need to figure out if you're a crop sensor camera or a full frame. So in this case, this is a full frame camera. So it's straight up 500 divided by the focal length. I'm shooting at 20 millimeters, 500 divided by my focal length is going to give me 25 second shutter speed. If it's a crop sensor camera, I need to figure out what the focal length is by multiplying the focal length times 1.5 or 1.6, depending on my crop factor. Uh, you need to find that out on your own, find out what that is for your system, and then multiply your focal length by the crop factor, and that'll give you the focal length you need to buy by 500. Okay, so figure out the shutter speed. We're going to have to open up the aperture all the way down to 2.8. Wide as it goes. Okay, and now. Lastly, we need to figure out our ISO. So our ISO, uh, basically I'm going to go around 1600 to 3200. You can go higher than that, just be watching for kind of blown out stars. And then obviously you have enhanced noise, that kind of thing. So uh, I'll cover ISO in a more in depth in a whole other video. I'm going to link that down below. I uh, hope you guys use that one. So ready? We're going to shoot. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Hit that subscribe button. And I wish you all clear skies. Cheers.